Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. Today is a very exciting and a very busy day because we have the potato harvest. Now you may have done some potato harvesting yourself, but this is the very first time that I have harvested potatoes in FS22. So I look forward to it. So it's gonna be quite expensive because we need to rent the harvester and the harvester is big. Well, it's physically very large, but it's not, when you compare it to a combine harvester, it's not very wide, uh, but that's just the way these machines are. So yeah, it's 600,000 pounds to buy it, which we definitely won't be doing. Let's just see the different wheel brand configurations. Yep, lots of nice ones to choose from there. So it doesn't change the price, so I think we're gonna go with this one. I always seem to go for BKT, I don't know why. I just like them. <laughs> Not sponsored in any way. Um, so yeah, let's go for BKT. And um, we'll lease it. It is £30,500 plus almost 6000 per day plus 12500 per hour. So yeah, the sooner we can get this done, the better, because that is uh, fairly crazy. So I'm going to be taking these potatoes, as we established in the previous episode, down to the train silo. They do need to catch a train, but yeah, luckily we can summon the train when we're ready. Uh, it does have a very nice large storage silo over there, so we don't have to go dropping them in the shed like I initially thought. Uh, just because the train station, or the train which delivers to another location, is offering the best price by far. I think it's possibly even £100 more than the next best place. So either way it's good, even if it isn't quite a hundred. So here we go, look at this, the Grimmer Ventor 4150. It's big, but it, it, it seems quite compact in a way. It seems very neat, the way it packs up. So because I will be doing quite a bit of carting, I do need to take this headland off first of all. So let's unfold it. It's also nice that it's uh, all one piece, we don't have to attach the header. Yeah, it really does unfold beautifully. Look at that, it's a transformer. Wow. So many different moving parts. Right, okay. So, very good visibility. see the potatoes going up there, up the conveyor belt. Can't look behind me too much because otherwise I'm going to miss bits and that would not be good. Turn the beacon off. So yeah, we're going to be using the big red trailer. Use the lorry to transport it all over to the train silo. There we go, you can see the potatoes falling into the back. Bit of a flat texture, but yeah, everything else about the machine I absolutely love. Yeah, that's the worst thing about it in my opinion. Okay, oh, destroying bits of the crop there, it's not good. Yes, I have made this area very tight and I knew it was tight when I planted the potatoes. That took a bit of turning around. Anyway, yeah, we can head back down again and then we'll head back up again and then we'll Probably, actually, yeah, we'll go up and down a few times because otherwise the worker is going to be having trouble. I've just really struggled myself to manoeuvre it. We have to have a good area to turn around on. So probably up until uh, the grass, when we reach the grass, we can start to go across the field. But no, I think all of the Giants machines are really, really nice. They're so well modelled. Lots of attention to detail. Good sounds as well. Yeah, I, only, I actually do only have one negative and it's just the uh, stream of potatoes there. Everything else about it is just lovely. Really, really good. You can tell when a, a lot of effort and a lot of work has been put into something. But yeah, I'm really hoping they will be uh, adding more 3D, I'm not going to say 3D textures, but you know, 3D models to the game, so like a 3D potato. 3D potatoes falling into the hopper on the back, but it's very easy for somebody in my position who just plays the game to uh, say, "Oh, that could be better." Because yes, I I don't know I don't know how to do it myself, so it's yeah it's hard to then 
criticise and say, oh, well, this could be better, but you know what I'm saying. Everything else about it is absolutely fantastic, and I really appreciate the work which has been involved. I will try that. Hopefully that is going to be enough removed for the worker to turn around. Still a tight area though. And I've noticed another thing which I really like about this machine, and that is the fact that the hopper continues to fill, uh, even when you've finished lifting at the front. So it takes time to process through the machine and reach the hopper on the back. So just to demonstrate what I mean, you can see the harvester is just reaching the end now, so it's lifted it, but you can see the fill gauge at the bottom is still increasing. You can still see it going to the hopper on the back. Still increasing, so it's being processed through the machine. And there we go. So everything has been processed. I think that's really nice. Attention to detail. Right, so we're almost full, 92%. I will get the lorry which is just here, has the curtain cider, and oh no, of course I moved the pot plant in the previous episode but it's respawned in its original position, <laughs> I told you, I run over this thing every episode, I'm so sorry pot plant, seems to be becoming a bit of a running joke, it really shows how well the field has yielded though, the fact that it is pretty much full, and all we've done is that end piece and just go up there once. It's looking really promising. And yes, I will have to take over because the conveyor belt is on the wrong side. I won't let this happen in the future. We can adjust the conveyor belt, the height of it, and tilt it into there. So one load is not going to fill the trailer. So this is giving me some time to drive the harvester myself. For this run though, I just want to make sure the worker can turn around. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be two or three loads to fill the trailer. I think it is three. Okay, right, there we go. Let's continue. monster. Right, so yeah, the machine was full, like it's 37%, so it's not quite three loads that will fit. About two and a half. So far, so good. And yeah, the worker can't destroy the crop, so it doesn't matter if it drives into the crop, which it is doing. Yes, I wouldn't have wanted to leave it any further out towards the road. If anything, it does need a bit more taking off, but yeah, it's going to be uh, acceptable. It can do it. Right, so now that I know that, I'm going to jump back into it, save some money on worker fees. And I will do this myself. It's only when I'm actually taking the lorry to the sell point when I need the worker, or when I'm unloading. So is this going to work best in first person or third person view? I think actually for this particular machine, first person is going to be easier because it's really hard to see the front of the header. In the cab we do have a fantastic view. Try and keep it as straight as possible. Going to have to miss a row for this piece. So yeah, let's start a time lapse and when we get onto the... This is a very comfy seat. When we get onto the third hopper load, so when we've emptied the next time, um, I'm going to uh, head off. We'll head off to the train station. I keep calling it a train station. It's like it's, it's actually going to go and catch a train. I suppose it is. <laughs> Not like it goes and stands on the platform, though. And, uh, yeah. yeah it, will, it will all be good. We'll be able to empty it into the silo. 
and it would give us a grand total as well. I wonder exactly how many potatoes we have harvested in litres. Well, it's looking like we probably are going to have to pay one hourly fee, one more hourly fee. Forget exactly how much that was. Quite a bit. Uh, 12. Crikey, 12,579 pounds. So I hope we are going to <laughs> make a huge profit still. We should do. Potatoes are a pretty good crop to do. So this is going to fill it, and it probably won't empty the harvester. So we do need to head off. Put a bit more in the front, I think. What I found is if you don't put enough weight on the axles of the tractor unit, of the lorry, you can very easily jackknife. It's nice and evenly loaded, I would say. Good looking load. Right, so yeah, luckily the uh, train silo is not too far from here. However, when we get back, I would expect it to still be full. Uh, we need to also change the tipping. It's currently set to tip side back. I need to change this to sliding floor. It's a, it's a walking floor, um, so that prevents it from tipping up because where we're tipping, I think it actually might just about be able to tip in the upright, but it's uh, it's not ideal. A walking floor is much more appropriate, and yeah, it keeps doing that, it keeps lifting up. <laughs> For some reason, the axle lifts up on one side. It might just be because it's very heavy. Yeah, it sort of floats up into the air. More when we're steering. Uh, yeah, okay, right, so just down here is our location. And if you've never seen this place before, you don't get the money immediately. We do actually have to request the train. It has to come and stop here, then we fill it up, and we send it off. That way it is cheaper, because you just because you have to pay for the train only get it once. Sell it in one big bulk load. Okay, so you can actually see the walking floor, kind of, well you could with the chaff, it might be quite hard to see. Oh, there we go. So it's actually very realistic. That pushes it out. So, again, a very well modelled trailer. See if we can get back before it's full. Actually, look how many potato fields there are. Neighbouring farms have put potatoes in too. It must be a good year for them. Uh, we could have actually bought that field there, and we still can do. But I don't know at this stage if we're going to be buying that case which is in the sale. Because at the time of recording this video, that video has only just been published. So we'll know in the next episode. We might be buying it. Looking good, it hasn't actually popped up and said 80% full or anything, so 
I think we've made it. We do have to empty going up, though. Oh, now. <laughs> Good timing. Let's get it emptied. How full is it? Oh, it's quite empty, actually. Probably... Probably about half full. I can possibly get an idea of how full this is by seeing how much we have in here after this. I'm going to go with about 12,000. Okay, it's more than 12,000. 14 and a half. Okay, so it was over half full, I think. I must be over half full. Uh, so, it's doing such a good job, I don't want to stop it. Get some close-up action. You can see all the soil falling off here. Got dust. That's a brilliant machine. And then we've got the sort of cleaned potatoes up here. Not not super clean, but you know it's had all the uh, loose soil removed. I've just checked, and the cows really could do with a feed mix. So my plan is to empty the potato harvester again. Right now, going up. It gives me a bit of time to be able to at least start the feed mixture. And we will keep using the additive just because we have it now. I did buy quite a bit, but uh, yeah, it's going to take a bit of time to get through it. But I don't know if we'll ever buy additive again. Let me know, is it worth it? Is it worth adding the additive to the feed mixture? Because it is quite expensive. Must be almost empty. Yeah, there we go. So, that does give us quite a bit of time. Although, annoyingly, <laughs> my tractor is up here. So we're just going to have to use the other tractor temporarily. Just get this to go back to the farm for us. And, oh, actually, we can use this. Use the fence tractor. Despite its size, it is more than capable. Physically small, but it's actually very powerful. Over 100 horsepower. Okay then, so I think we do still have something in the feed mixer. Yep, 61%, so we'll get that going. Get it emptied out. Uh, there were a few people asking why I'd given them hay. It was an accident, it wasn't actually uh, a perfect mixture, so it wasn't considered total mix ration. That's why it registered as hay didn't just give them hay. A little bit more. And there we go. Right, so we can now start to put more bales into here and silage. Position it over this way. Still need to access the bale though. So put it there. Uh, the mixer is going. We still have plenty of silage. All this spilt silage here, I will be cleaning up. In fact, I'll probably start taking it from the side. And we will need to have a straw bale as well. So we'll just grab a straw bale. Uh, not forgetting that I do have quite a few straw bales left on the trailer in the shed. It does need to be emptied. It needs to be put in that pile just over there. Uh, but I don't really need that much of this. We only need to put in about, I think it's about a thousand litres or so, maybe 15, 1500. So, a little bit more, there we go, that should be good. Pop it over here. We do need quite a bit of hay. We have 5,130 litres. That's a bit too much, um, but we do still need uh, at least 2,500 litres of it. Don't fall off. Right, that should do. We may need to add a bit more later. Now for silage. Probably just 
just put that there. Uh, put the bucket on. The bucket's probably already got something in it, so if it has, we'll use what's in it. Uh, 4%. So you can see some of it has spilt out at the front here. Uh, sometimes you do have to be parallel. Perfectly square with it. Okay, it looks like some of these bits uh, are a bit difficult to pick up. Anything which can't be picked up we can just use the uh, landscaping tool one to remove it but that'll be at the end when we've uh, cleared the whole pit oh that's a good load right so yeah it's 2656 litres we'll put all of this in hopefully there'll be a bit of space left for the additive I could put the additive in first but it's not the end of the world if no additive goes in okay oh it's only 61% So with the additive I have been doing it by hand because realistically we could be taking off a bag by hand, they're very small. You can see that they're just bags which are designed to be picked up by hand. But we have to take the whole pallet. It's also easier to uh, fine tune it. So that should be enough. 65% so the rest of it can be silage and hay uh, in that case I will put in the rest of that hay bale so I know for next time I'll know exactly what to do I thought it was probably too much but in actual fact it's about right this is the thing, if you don't get the mixture right, it doesn't register as total mixed ration. It goes in as hay, so you've got to be careful. Brilliant. Yeah, so 84%, the rest can be silage. Before we do, though, this is in a good place and it's almost full. So it makes sense to get it unloaded. And it's actually really eating through the field now. It's doing so well. Unlike me, who's just constantly crashing into it. <laughs> Nothing ever changes. Um, <laughs> don't think it made a mess of it. Didn't knock it off course. Seems to be okay. Right, so we can get a bit more in. We'll only take it when it's 100%. Gives me time to finish off. For anybody wondering, we do have, uh, apart from what's been spilt on the outside, 43,730 litres left in the pit, which is uh, pretty good going. It's going to be okay. We'll get through the winter with that. And I'm actually still planning on making some more silage this year. Silage bales. Right, so our feed mixture is done. I'll also have to shred some more bales for manure. For the bedding. I'm guessing the uh, tractor made it back. I wasn't looking at the notifications, so it must have. Oh, for crying out loud. What's it doing? Interesting. Um. Don't think I can. Can I tap to it? Should be able to. Okay, we're gonna park here. How mysterious I'm going to hazard a guess that the reason why I did that is because it's a fairly big drill that we have here and it's actually got stuck on stuff before uh, it probably 
met a car or something in the opposite direction and it got into its zone, its um, collision zone, so it just decided to wait there. Which, yeah, is much more intelligent than just crashing into it, but of course, there was probably a message it was probably telling me. It is a wide drill, actually, uh, to be transporting on this tractor. Right, so now we can uh, finally get this put into here. Olive is doing lots of different jobs at the moment. So you can see all the places where we need to be putting the uh, mix ration. Pile it all up. This won't fulfill all of it, it's not going to get it to 100%, but it's going to be a, a nice chunk. Maybe 60% or so. Okay, there we go. So let's just take a look here. Oh, there we go. So it's about 80% pretty good uh, and yes yeah, they won't eat the hay unless the total mix ration has been uh, consumed but it's just like a backup now but that's good that's good for now we can uh, park this here we do another mixture soon but I do need to empty the potato harvester we can head off because yeah it won't be a full load this time from the harvester Yeah, I need to get that wheat field ploughed up on Carmsden. The wheat field that withered. I know quite a few viewers have said uh, I should add some money in as like an insurance uh, payment. Um, I, I don't know. The problem is, although yeah, loads of people will see that as a really good idea. There'll always be a few who who don't think it's a good idea. So uh, I think we'll just see how we go. If for whatever reason we suddenly get into some really bad financial issues, which I don't think we will do then we can consider it, but I think at the moment I'm just going to take it as my mistake and um, yeah it, it, it's done, what's done is done I can just try and recover from it, but I think really actually in the end, looking at it, it's not a big problem, because that field was a wheat field which hadn't been fertilised I don't think, I don't think it had been fertilised at all and uh, instead of spending that time before winter harvesting it, I'm actually going to be able to put a winter crop in instead because uh, it's given us that time and um, it means that I can plough the field, I can mulch the field we can fertilise it fully so next year we can just have a super good crop instead because uh, if I had run out of time, which I think I would have done we would have been um, putting a spring crop in and it wouldn't have been a cereal crop I'm planning on putting a second wheat in Especially as that one didn't get harvested. So yeah, I'm going to turn a bad situation into a good one. Uh, this lorry does like to hop. I've seen some more lorries on ModHub. I'm going to try them out. See if they react the same way. It might just be because of the weight of the trailer. It only does it when it's full. It must be doing pretty well. Oh, it's tipping. It must have defaulted to tipping. Try that again, that was close. Yes, if you ever tip under here, uh, you're going to have some big issues. The trailer might go flying. Okay, there we go. Let's get back for what is probably going to be the final load. It always seems to be in the best place. Really good timing. But it's never desperate to unload. So I will go and shred some bales. Because I, I really want to keep that manure production up. We can fertilise this field with our own produce. Our own products. Lovely manure. Natural. Cheap. Very cheap. We just have to pay for the production of the bales diesel machinery and um, 
yeah, we do have to buy a muck spreader, of course, but that's not going to be a big problem. Not to mention more environmentally friendly. So, yeah, I think I'll use this tractor. Keep the fence on the uh, feed mixer. So we do have uh, two barrels. I think one of them's probably been partially consumed. I'm actually going to put three in. And should probably unload that trailer too, come to think of it. I'm leaving all the weight on that trailer. But it's not really the point, it's just, it's, yeah, it's using up the trailer. So I can't use it for transporting eggs and stuff. Triple stack. Lovely. There's the train. You can guarantee that when we need the train though, it will be many kilometers away. We'll have to wait for it. It'd be amazing if it's just going past. Okay, so yeah, there's probably other locations where you can beta shred these, but I just go here. I find that to be the most sensitive trigger. Uh, but yes, I think we're going to have to be uh, pressing I quite a few times here for each bale. That's two. We really don't have a shortage of straw bales, we've got loads. Nine thousand litres at a time. Oh, and that's it. Okay, right, well. It's going to keep them going, keep the manure production up. Could even park this just over here. As long as it doesn't stop the uh, manure spawning. I don't think it will do, but you never know. 22,496 litres. That's already enough to do... I'd say that'd be enough to do that whole field. Very good. Right, so I'm going to start building this stack up and out a bit. We don't have millions of bells, we just have some. As you can see. Produced from uh, for 23. be okay just there, although I do need to get in the back first of all, because I've put three across like that. go. Uh, so do I dare stack six high or will I go through the roof? I would like to. Five would be ideal. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I don't want to come too far out. Keep an eye on the potato harvester as well. I will have to empty it. It's almost done. So close. Okay. Uh, yes, I really could do with having a three put on there next. Just slide this one across. Scoop up these. <laughs> there we go. Okay, right. 
so we'll have two stacks of six and then we'll just build this front one up very tidy This is our final strip to do. Looks like a really perfect width there. Look at that, <laughs> made to measure. And um, yeah, we're gonna be about 55, 60% full. And then we can sell it all. We're gonna sell it all today in one go. It'll be very interesting to see how much we make. And annoyingly, you've probably noticed, the uh, next payment, the hourly payment went out for the harvester and uh, we've only just got into this hour so that is just so annoying. In fact it probably works out to be that if this field had been slightly smaller we would have made more money. But although I absolutely love the fact that you can rent, I do think the prices are too high. What do you think? Do you, do you think they're too high? Let me know. Obviously they have to be fairly high, otherwise you could, why, why would you ever want to buy anything? But uh, how much have we spent? I think we've spent today on this harvester around... It must be 40-something 40, 40 thousand pounds. So we've got to deduct that as an expense. Fill it up at the back a bit. Uh, yeah, it, it's been about 40, I think about 43,000 pounds just off the top of my head. Another really good looking trailer load. So there we go, we were less than six minutes over the, uh, the hour. Let's get it returned, but it has been so good. Let's hope that we can make a huge profit now. Let's come find out. 49,000 litres. And just to be clear, I love Giant's work and I fully support everything they do. Whenever I make a comment about something that I don't like, it is said in a helpful way. Constructive criticism. And really, there's nothing major. This game is really good. It really is good. just the odd little thing. Okay, well whilst this is tipping, I'm going to go and summon the train. We'll see how far away it is. Probably quite a long way. Yep, that's not tipping. That's good. I did have to change it again to walking floor. Uh, yes, it's 2.2 kilometers away, so we'll have to wait probably three minutes. Because it has to stop. Unless it's coming in the same direction, it has to stop. And do reverse. There we go. So how much do we have? 167,802 litres. That is going to be too much for one compartment on the train. And £555 is what we can get per 1,000 litres. So you can already do the calculation if you want to. But you can see how uh, how much higher it is. And we get the added benefits of actually storing it here. We'd have to drop it on the ground first and then scoop it all up. 
or sell as we go. Where's the train? 1.4 kilometers. I'll just wait here for it. There it is. I think it must be reversing. I think. I'm pretty sure it comes in from this direction. Yes, it is reversing. So you can go into one of these. Probably that one there. This one here as well. Okay, so yeah, I've rented this. Costing us money. And I need to make sure we have the correct cover opened up. So, I think it's 100,000 litres per compartment, so it's going to be almost two. Well, it's one and two thirds. See if we can see that a bit better. There we go. That's the first 100,000 litres, or 90,000 litres. Okay. And the rest should fit into there. But look, yeah, it looks like it's going to be exactly or close to two full ones. This might contain less because it doesn't have a cover. We will find out. There we go. Right. Let's head off. We're going to keep going backwards because it's closer to our destination. But it, it, it's so good to see our crop in this uh, truck. Would it be cool? I, I don't know much about train. I think but it's like a truck. It's not like a carriage, I don't think. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it's in there, and we're going to be um, see how much we've made. Should be good. Any second, there's our farm. Hello, cows. Okay, 93,146, oh and that's our vehicle leasing, 43,197, so um, yes it, it was worth it, it was worth it, the profit wasn't huge, but certainly yeah, something, something different, first time I've done it, and it was enjoyable. So we're going to cut this grass in the future, we're then going to extend that field up to here, but that'll all be in future episodes. Thank you so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed it, and until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.